I very much welcome the, uh, yes. the scope of the debate we've had over the two days. It's been good quality debate. I think every single speaker has made a contribution uh, where at least part of it, I think, uh, really takes us forward and informs the debate uh, very usefully. I was particularly taken uh, by Desmond Nulty's concluding remarks where he said one of his key aims is to ensure that we keep it simple uh, during stage two. As the minister who has the pleasant duty of carrying that forward on behalf of the government, I heartily subscribe to that view and hope that we're able uh, to deliver on that. It has, of course, been an unusual debate, I think, in at least this parliament, unique in having four uh, government ministers contributing to it. And I think that isn't just an indication of the day-to-day -day engagement of those four ministers, but a much more general reflection of the fact that every minister, as every member of this parliament, and indeed everyone in the wider community, has to be their own climate change champion in relation to their own circumstances. And I want to work with other members of this parliament in a sense that puts flesh on that so that we can identify areas of common ground ways of taking the subject forward uh, that sustain the very positive tone of today. Uh, we will find ourselves able to support the Labour amendment. Uh, the Liberal Democrat amendment does present a single difficulty for us that in means we will not be able to, and that is an area of uh, public duties. However, I'm saying right now we're prepared to continue to discuss that subject, but I think we in particular have to make sure that we recognise the very real sensitivities uh, that, that COSLA and the local councils have, so we may yet find that we're able to converge on something that I think strikes the right balance, but I think the amendment today does not do so, and therefore uh, we cannot uh, support it. And of course the discussions will continue uh, through stages two and three. So the support that we're going to see, unless I'm very much mistaken, at five o'clock uh, for the general principles is but the first uh, step. There's a great deal more work to do to justify what we all want, uh, which is a bill and actions which act as a beacon uh, for others to follow. Challenging the European Union to step up to the mark on a 30% target for 2020 is one where I think uh, there can be shared ambition. I think uh, uh, I've had a discussion with uh, Mr McNulty and Ms Boyack uh, since yesterday's debate, uh, and I think that's highlighted that perhaps we have a greater uh, common understanding uh, on targets, the annual targets that we'll put in place uh, through secondary legislation next year, and the need for those to form the core that will be the, 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 the form the core for which ministers will be accountable uh, over the period to come. And of course, within a couple of years, we'll have actually set uh, uh, targets that basically take us half the way uh, to 2050. So it will be a substantial uh, set of commitments that we have there. Uh, Ms. Boyack uh, described the present bill's uh, comments on public duties as vague commitments. Alice McInnes uh, uh, urged us to early action. I made reference uh, earlier uh, today to the fact that we're building on action that has previously taken place. This is a continuum of activity uh, that transcends from the previous administration into this administration and will continue after many of us are no longer on this earth uh, to see uh, it, it, it in operation. There was, however, a, a sense that uh, we could disregard expert advice. I think one of the things we've got to cling to uh, very carefully, uh, each and every one of us, is the need to ensure that the expert advice is what we use to determine figures. The moment politicians start to pluck figures out of the air, however well they might justify it by selecting uh, what may have been said elsewhere, we give future generations of politicians that hook for deciding to renege or move back or be less ambitious. And I think there's a very general point. In June next year, if things go to plan, there will be advice from that committee that may give us a different question, a, a different answer. And of course, we will respect that because we have something where information is evolving, uh, where understanding is increasing. 
One of the things that Alison McInnes uh, said, which uh, we thought was quite interesting in adding to the debate about how Parliament should scrutinise the government's efforts, was that we should look at the model uh, that has been adopted for national planning framework in the 2006 Act uh, on planning. We are looking at the wording in that Act to see if we can uh, simply lift it and put it uh, in, in, into the current Act. I think uh, the tight targets for Stage 2 mean we are more likely to be able to bring that forward should we conclude that we can uh, at Stage 3, and we're looking very seriously at that. It's not yet a commitment, but we're doing the work to see if we can. Um, Patrick Harvey and I had a wee exchange uh, on the subject of the Maldives, who of course are, are seeking to go carbon neutral, and that's uh, extremely admirable. However, I, I would make the comment, uh, having gone and looked at the subject, uh, they are not of course including aviation in their ambition, and uh, tourism is, uh, is, is their main industry, uh, so I think the situation is not quite the same. But that illustrates the, the, the particular point that every country uh, must find its own uh, salvation. Uh, Patrick Harvey also referred to aviation and shipping, important uh, that we continue uh, to do that. Alec Johnson referred to the 34%, 42% approach uh, and commended that as one that we'd see favour uh, on, on his, uh, his benches. Yes, sorry, I didn't hear initially. Uh, I'm, very Patrick grateful, Harvey. I'm very grateful to the Minister. He'll be aware that not everyone commended the 34-42% approach which the Government has decided to take. Whether or not the annual targets are on the face of the bill or in secondary legislation after the bill is passed, how is a Minister to set those annual targets if they haven't yet decided and won't yet decide for several years whether you're aiming for 34 or 42? Minister. Oh, no. The that, that, that's to misunderstand. The 34 and 42 and will be what will inform, together with the up-to-date uh, advice from the Climate Change Committee next year, the annual targets that will be set. There is an absolute uh, linkage there. Right. I must make uh, some fairly rapid uh, progress, uh, presiding, uh, presiding officer. Um, Charlie Gordon, of course, came up with the best question of the debate, as he often does, what are you going to do? Um, and I think that's absolutely uh, it focused absolutely on the money, that once we get this bill out of the way, we've got to focus uh, on delivery, we've got to focus on making sure the outcomes. Liam MacArthur advocated a bottom-up approach in developing things. I think that commends it. I would suggest gently that's a little bit at odds with the idea we should centrally direct through public duties uh, what's going on. Lewis MacDonald talked about uh, renewable promotion uh, of 11%. That's a, a, a renewable energy, 11%. That's, of course, a part of an overall 20% uh, that includes a range of other things. We're actually aiming to do a little better than the UK, so I think uh, uh, that, that's reasonable. Uh, John Scott uh, we are uh, conducting a rural uh, land use uh, study uh, and uh, we'll be bringing uh, forward uh, something on that shortly. Uh, the community on eggs that Rob Gibson uh, mentioned, of course, was supported by the Scottish Government under the Scottish Community Renewable Scheme. That, I think, uh, was uh, an excellent initiative and we look with continuing interest at what's happening uh, on egg. Presiding officer, it has certainly been uh, an interesting and engaging debate, and it's the beginning of what will be a continuing and ongoing engagement uh, for years to come. John F. Kennedy, uh, some years ago, uh, said that any problem man creates, man can solve. We must hope that uh, John F. Kennedy was, of course, correct, but there is no absolute certainty uh, in that regard. Finally, let me just uh, share with you that yesterday one of the senior uh, government directors uh, said to me about electrifying the whole of Scotland's rail networks, surely we're going to have to have battery-powered trains to go to Kyle of La Hulsh and places like that. Well, the good news, presiding officer, is there are already some battery-powered trains operating in England, and we'll copy a good idea wherever it comes from. I support the motion that stands in my name.